Hey, guess what? It's another weekday and I'm at the shop. Yep, been working, been getting stuff done. The impossible steering column, turns out it is possible. And I also got the top of the heater core box removed and the heater core itself, I guess. Those three lines right here were all full of coolant and uh, the other ones there, those are full of AC Freon, so I can't open that until we evacuate that system, but whew, look at the wiring in here. This is all wiring. How ridiculous is this? I mean, there would be hundreds if not thousands of miles of wire in here. Now, I pushed everything out of the trunk. So everything that was back here in this corner where the battery used to be, the electronics box, there's nothing in the trunk. Literally anything that's in the trunk is part of the chassis. That is it. Now, come up to the front and see that uh, the pedals are gone. That was, that was a bitch. The key for removing the steering column was this long bolt that went sideways that then released the entire assembly and allowed me to push it down and kind of force it out of there. Um, so that actually didn't take long once I just decided to try that. Um, I still have wires going in here feeding the electronics inside of this door. So I'll have to see, I can't get to that because this is as far as the door opens when the car's on a lift. So we're bottlenecked there. I also can't get this carpeting out until we remove that. And I can't remove that until I get the AC free on out. So there's another bottleneck. But um, the electronics box, everything over here, I mean, we're down to the firewall on the front passenger side. These are all the electrical connections and wires that went into the DME box. I removed the DME box today um, and pulled all of the wires that ran out front towards the engine out. And here's some of the contents of the DME box. I guess just the DME is here. These are the modules I was talking about yesterday. DWS, LWR, EWS, that's the acceleration sensor, general module three. Both of these were in the rear C pillars. I'm not totally sure what those are. Maybe a GPS antenna slash the antenna for the uh, the key. There's a light control module. It is an LCM, uh, why don't I see that, 3B. So that's kind of a late one. That was inside the DME box. And then up front here, this is just the engine harness. It's just sitting in there. It is not attached to anything. This is the engine harness. And holy crap, is it a hell of a harness. Um, there's also a secondary harness here that goes down and plugs into the transmission for a reverse sensor and the oxygen sensor wires are part of that harness. So that's all the engine related stuff. Um, the ABS module is no more. Everything up there is gone. We're just torn down. Really the AC system needs to be evacuated ASAP. Then we're going to be able to take a lot more down. Now we're off. The brake booster. What an absolute bitch that was. That was the first two or three hours today. Absolutely sucked. All the brake lines are gone. That also absolutely sucked. Most of them, all of them are sitting here. I had to cut them up and bend them and just pull them as hard as I could through their clips and such to pull them out. But all steps towards engine removal. Now, an issue I'm going to face here is this door. If I want, I don't know what it looks like to remove shadow line trim, I've never done it. But if I want to do that independently, without having to sell the door with it on there, I need to figure it out. Now, if the window has to go down at all, I am beyond screwed because there's absolutely no way the electronics in this car are going to power that. Now, of course, I could feed the motor 12 volts and it would probably run and reverse the poles for up and down, I'm guessing. I don't really want to have to do that. Um, I just really hope I don't have to put the window down to get the trim off, but I probably do. So let me know if you know that's going to be the same case on all four doors. And then underneath, I still have a subframe and a diff in here just because I need another guy to help me take it down. And then whatever all this shit is up in here, I, I really don't know. There's like a little tank in this wheel well, and then there's some sort of a, maybe this is the charcoal canister. And now you're in the trunk. Hey, so we're back. It's a two taker today. Um, today was really kind of a catch up day. I spent the entire morning until afternoon here um, doing mail and vlogs and the usual kind of stuff. Then went up to the shop, you saw what I did there. Um, I left just after six, I came back here, I took a shower, washed the grease off my arms and face, and uh, then headed down to, to uh, downtown the gas lamp quarter tonight. Megan and I tried a new place called the Hoppin' Pig or something like that. It was pretty good. Uh, wasn't real busy when we got in there about eight, but it got busy by the time we left around 9.30. 
then we hit up Ghirardelli for a uh, Sunday because it was right across the street. You have to do that when you're down there. Now we just got back and it's 10.30. On the way back in the M5, the, my M, the E39, some very, very weird things going on with the navigation. So I started the car, it was fine. Uh, the first drove out of the parking garage and went out on fourth and made a left and all of that was normal. Uh, but then the screen started to flicker. It would go off for a couple seconds and then come on and off and then back on. And then it, it, start, it kept flickering, but it showed this message that said, uh, display shutting down due to high heat. Well, I felt it, it wasn't hot at all. I just started the car. Um, and then, then it got real weird. It started like folding out like I was going to put a tape in it and then it would go back in and then come back out and back in. And with, after a few seconds of that, it was really like a child was in there. Just remember the elf movie? He gets in the elevator in the Empire State Building and just goes like every button on the inside of the elevator, you know, from floor one to 90, however many floors, 104, are in the Empire State Building. Uh, Everything, every single screen you can come up with was going through and cycling things and changing things and I, I tried to turn on and off the radio and interact with the display and nothing was working. So when I dropped her off, I got out of the car, disconnected the BM53 and Mark IV for about five seconds, plugged them back in, it system booted back up and it was fine the entire way home. So I think it's one of those really weird, just total spaz, psycho glitch things that the E39 does about every five years I get something really weird out of it. Uh, the one time I, I backed it out of the garage back in Ohio to park next to the 330. It's the only picture I have of, of my two cars together. Um, and then I got back in the car, put the key in, turned it all the way, nothing. Not a click, absolutely nothing would happen. Took the key out, put it back in, wouldn't even attempt to start. So I took the key out, got out, closed the door, locked it, unlocked it, opened the door, got in, started right up. It's been fine since. Just weird little electrical things on old cars. Anyways, I'm talking too long. I'm going to go to bed. Uh, tomorrow, Nate's coming down from Orange County. It's going to be a blast. We're going to go to the shop, go to Cars and Coffee, do some stuff. Uh, we'll talk then. We'll film it. And uh, I'll talk to you guys on Saturday. Night.